It is now the time to open the floor for any comments, discussions, questions. Um, and we have about, what, 15 minutes? About 20 minutes if we, if we need to. If not, we'll have a break and uh, do other things. All right, fine. So I see a hand. Madam, oh, uh, please. Do you want me to stand up or is this okay? Anyway, hi everyone. Um, I am Caitlin. I'm, I'm talking from the student view. Um, I have a couple of questions, so I apologize if it takes too long and they're all directed at different people. Um, one of my questions is, so Gen Z are joining the workforce, right? And if we all agree that education is to provide them an opportunity to be better employees and to get a good job, I say if we agree, because some people don't, and <laughs> that's another Fair discussion. Enough. Fair enough. Um, but if this is, if this is right, um, when they join the workforce, the tools that are used, like spreadsheets and like um, Word documents and like things like that, that are very archaic and stuff they've never really come across, how do we tackle that? Like, should we be improving the tools that we use like in offices? Because otherwise it's... We're going to teach younger people, hey, look, come have a job with us, join us. And then they arrive and they're like, what is this? What is it? Oh, I have to, you know, etc." So that's one question. I think that's open to everyone. And then I have questions actually, because I'm a journalist, so I'm really curious about the training of journalists. I actually train journalists. Um, one thing, I, I, I put it on Slido as well, so <laughs> that's May easier. I suggest that yes. um, we, we get that, some feedback and then go to the second question, to course. make sure that they deal with the second question, sure. all right? Sorry. So, um, anyone on the panel would like to comment briefly, of course, but Patrick, yes? Um, first of all, more than education, we have to deal with learning, lifelong learning. And as I said in my presentation, we're living in a reality where we have four different generations who are living together. We have four living generations for the sole reason that technology is changing so much, so quickly, that even culture is changing so quickly. Now, the issue is this. I cannot expect that the Gen Z are tech savvy, while the Gen X and the Gen Y are less tech savvy. So it's very important that if I, I mean, myself, I don't have a pen anymore. The only pen I have is in the car just in case I have an accident. I were completely digital. Um, then again, I may even meet students who find it difficult just to upload their assignment on the cloud and just send me the link of their assignment. Mm. They expect to send me everything on the VLE, and that's very questionable. So that's why I'm talking about education. It's very important that the people who are going to work and the people who are already at work are very much aware of the qualities that can be channeled through these technologies for various reasons. You know, I mean, I mean efficiency, l l less waste of paper and things like that. Um, okay, thank you. Anyone else on the panel would like to comment on? I, I want to say just one, one other ah, thing. Sorry, I thought yes, you were done. Um, I'll get for instance, in I have a friend time. of mine who's a notary. And four years ago, he told me how I'm going to get rid of all this room full of paper. And I taught him how to scan things, and eventually he purchased two computers, one backing the other, before he started using the cloud. And now everything he needs is tagged on the cloud. So if I go there, he just writes my name, and every document that has my name on it comes up, and it will make it even easier to sift through things, and he doesn't have to um, spend money to get the, 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 the what do you call them, um, those people who um, uh, for the insects, you know, um, like Comtech. Um, those people who, who have to, to, to ensure that he doesn't have cockroaches. And exterminators. Stuff. Yes, the, uh, exterminators um, <laughs> from his document, because everything is online. Yes. But I still tell him to back things up, just in case, for one reason or another, the cloud were to go down. So okay. Thank you. Patrick, Sorsha, and then I'll get you, Gary. Yes, she was before. I'll get you. Don't worry. Um, I used to work in careers education before I started this job. Um, so I've got my careers education hat on right now. Um, I think it's about giving young people um, transferable and adaptable skills to be resilient in the face of anything they come across in the workplace, whether that's a new piece of software they've never used or a completely new situation. Um, similarly to how we teach media literacy, 
we can't teach them, okay, this is how to do media literacy on TikTok, because in a few years that's not going to exist. Um, it's about this is how you interrogate any text, however you're seeing it in any format. So transferring that to the world of work and um, new things that are going to come across in the world of work, I think it's the same. It's if you come across a piece of software that you've never used before, what do you do? Do you just quickly Google a quick uh, tutorial on how to use it? Because I come across new things at work all the time. I'm only a year out of Gen Z, and I just Google things all the time. So is it just giving them those skills to kind of be self-sufficient in the face of things that they're coming across, rather than us saying this is how to use this? Because tech is going to things are going to keep changing. We can't change the curriculum and how we teach people for every new thing that's going to come across come up because it's going to change. You have to give people those adaptable skills to be resilient in the face of new things okay. that they see. Thank you, Sosha. Gary, seems like you're have a comment. Yeah, I mean, please, please, still. Very much agree with that. The, um, you know, we at some point we make choices, right? And I'm thinking about this point Patrick made, or um, Alex, you made, about the education we need and the education we actually have, right? There's the the institution is often behind the individuals in in the institution, and um, you know, someone might arrive in an institution. The Excel spreadsheet is a great example. Like we can prepare someone for it. But that'll change. That could change, and that might be different in another institution. Sure. So I like Patrick's point. You know, we need to teach. Um, we need to learn how to learn, right? Yes. Um, okay. Yeah. And and the question. I don't need that. I have this. Sorry, Gary. And the question for me is, and I'm not being satirical. I, I'm being honest and true. After having taught since 1975 at different levels, um, uh, my question is. Is what we do really educational, or is it something else? Because in my experience, with all due respect, even at the university level, a lot of what happens to me is not truly educational, but it is more like institutionalization of students, especially when we are still hooked with determining the future of students solely by MedSec and by darn exams. I was 15 years old when I failed everything in Malta in 1969, and I was told, I'm only good to be thrown into the fire. Yes. And I was a dropout. Now I learn I was a pushout, not a dropout, correct? So, I mean, I do question this very seriously. Is what we do under the umbrella of education truly educational? And if it isn't, then are we surprised that we have the problems that we have with misinformation and so on and so forth? I okay, mean, it's, but it's, you want to comment like on this yes. because I want to give her a chance. Yeah, well, we, we, um, All right, um, go ahead. Because again, I don't feel comfortable talking about you people when you should be taking my place and talking about yourselves as well. Actually, that's but very important. But we had sessions with, yes, with uh, young uh, people the, the as well. The thing is this, okay. but in education okay. doesn't happen. Yeah. I mean, that's a big difference. For a simple example, I do a presentation and I have the audience. Well, how can it be stimulating? It won't be, unless you do it yourself. So that's how education has to change, because when you're doing it, you're deciding how to do it, the logic behind it. Mm. You're developing these qualities that we take for granted. And they are very important mm. for, I mean, you who have technically facts at your fingertips, you have to learn to discern between the objective fact and the subjective fact, which are not the same. Most of the time, as, as Alex was saying... But Patrick, you are assuming we can truly always make that distinction, right? Uh, did, no, no, I'm not I'm saying, pushing. I'm not uh, saying uh, we, can't, we can make that distinction, but obviously... We, we need we to be to aware of it. The quali we have to give these qualities yeah. to the Gen Z, yes. who are the future, right. who have to pay for my pension, thank you, that you have to learn to survive in style. And one thing... We always hear, and I don't agree with it, we always hear that we're teaching for jobs they don't exist. Not true. We're teaching for jobs that in 10 years' time are going to become obsolete. Okay, all right. And that's what worries me a lot. Yes, the important distinction here is between employment and employability. Employability is broader and hopefully creates more flexibility. 
Thank you. Let's go back to Hi. Madam. Sorry, ask thank your you second for the, because for I want to bring in other debate. people also. Yes. Yeah. So I have some questions about um, the future of journalism. So I, I guess I'll open questions okay. to you. Yes. Um, so one, uh, you were saying that uh, journalists should learn ethics. Totally okay. agree. We, Demo you know, I, I, I think if we're going to be in a democratic society and a just one, we should. Um, one thing I, I want to ask about is we can create content by click of a button. Way. we can publish something does this mean everyone should have the same like training as journalists do when they publish things that's one question and another question is sorry i'm trying to put it into one um so there are fewer journalists around uh we we can say that there's there's numbers to prove that um which means there are fewer people who are actually holding those powerful to account like going to like local government meetings or going to court cases and stuff that are closed not necessarily to the general public, but they aren't somewhere that the general public are. How do we combat that? Do we teach more people who aren't necessarily journalists to go to those places and hold people to power? So I guess it's sort of linked. Thank you. I want to give chance to other people also to make comments or questions. So please, yes, briefly, Natalino, you may want to start. But any of the other people should feel free. Okay, thank you. Yeah, okay, so, um, yeah, today everyone can be a journalist, but what, what distinguishes journalists from, from the rest is fact-checking. So if, if, you, if you can post it now, if you can fact-check it now, post it now. If not, fact-check it before you post it. So, so um, we encourage citizen journalism. I mean, we encourage, um, at, at the Independent, we used to try and, and, and I took this culture with me through the Times, and we, we tried to do this also when I was at PBS. Um, Go to the villages and, and, and see what people are speaking about. You know, right. you were talking about when you were a journalist, the editor told you go to the pub, okay? Yes. Um, yeah, go to the pub yes. because 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 that, that, that uh, see what people are talking about. I mean, I, I remember when I was at PBS, I had a map behind me in my office, and I used to put a, a pin on every village from which we did a story, and uh, I was okay. We haven't done a story from from this part of the island for three weeks now, so we need to find a story from there. Because, because I wanted to make news relevant to people around, across the island. Malta is a small place. So, so um, um, it's, it's about democratiz democratization of news, too. Yeah. So, so uh, yeah, the other thing about... Natalino, about your point is, if I may, sorry to give you a bit of a break. My, you are reminding me in 1969, I grew up in Dingley, which was a very small village then, about 1,000 people. If you wanted to know the headline news of Dingley, you go to the only barber we had yeah. in Dingley, right? And then, and if you the wanted same. to know more exquisite news, we had two grocery shops, which after 7.30 became pubs. And then you get more exquisite and, uh, you know, sensitive news. So, but it's... it's and it's, it's still like that. Yeah, yeah. It's still like yeah, that. You're correct. Okay, go ahead. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, the, the other point you made is about, about these meetings, like court sessions and local councils and whatever. Um, yeah, the more eyes and, and ears you have, the better. Yeah? So, so, so... Um, uh, uh, I don't know how to encourage people to, <laughs> to listen into those sessions. Um, parts of them are online now. I'm, I mean, some of these sessions can be seen. I mean, some local councils have, have online streaming and stuff like that, which can be followed. Um, uh, but usually, I mean, as a journalist, I used to look at agendas. And uh, I used to make it a point to look at agendas to see what's happening, because sometimes a local issue can make it to a, a national headline. Yes, yes. But, uh, Natalino, I have a question for you, and I'll get you in, Alex, okay? Um, and I made the note even earlier throughout. It is fine to focus on skills. I don't have a problem with that. Skills are usually things that we learn how to do, right? You have the skills to cook. You have the skills how to drive a car. But I think we need something else besides skills. We need to have certain dispositions. I mean, we may teach students the skills how to check facts. But if they don't develop the value for checking the facts and the attitude, the disposition to check facts and to be skeptical even about themselves, then of course we are in deep trouble, right? Yep, we are. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I think we are in really deep trouble. Yeah, and, we are, and, yes. And, yes. Uh, one of the, I mean, there are, there are several students here, some media students, some journalism yeah. students here, and, and, and they can perhaps speak for themselves. But okay. I try to infuse life, to inject life into them, right. you know, enthusiasm. Because I think it's enthusiasm that has to drive us. Um, uh, I really believe that the, you have to be enthusiastic about what you're doing, because otherwise, you know, um, everything is flat. Yes, but we can also be enthusiastic about the wrong values. 
whatever that means. Okay, now it's okay. All right, I'll, I'll, I'll stop there. Alex is um, so, giving um, me a dirty look. Alex. No, because uh, because uh, um, we, uh, there are two. These are two. Two statements which really require a lot of discussion. Lot, we can of have, course, of course. We can have a year long conference yes. about, first of all, when we say the ethics of something, what do we really mean? Because ethics is actually a question of power, a question of discourse, yes. and who is writing the discourse. Exactly. So uh, w I'm sure that there are different ways in which we can have different codes of ethics which would be equally um, uh, valid, but which would be possibly diametrically opposite. Correct. So, so that is one of the issues that, you know, a code of ethics sometimes is used um, behind, by, 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 by the media. I was in the media for 15 years, seven years of them. I was editor, so I, I could have be, been one to blame, you know? Um, that sometimes an ethics is a, is, is a one way of hiding behind something to allow yourself to do something else. Exactly. Secondly, or to be silent about something else. Yes. Secondly, when we say we hold, you know, we hold institutions, uh, we hold power to, to, to account and all these things. The thing is, again, we are diminishing okay. the role of, um, of, 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 of journalism. Why? I mean, the media today is the equivalent to democracy, uh, what the theater was in ancient Greece. There is a direct link, actually. Yes, yes. And uh, the media is a power in itself. So holding, some, uh, holding power to account is like ho one power holding to account yes. another power. Exactly. So we should never forget that we are a power. Of course. And many times we are a power which is much more stronger than the state. Correct. Correct. We shape people's attitudes. I mean, in fact, whenever the state needs um, to, to, to uh, I mean, needs, needs the people to follow its lead, I mean, for example, there is a very good book um, about, for example, World War II and how, how the media was basically, you know, uh, the, the state enlisted the media to shape um, the, the, the people's minds during the conflict. Of course, exactly. So, media is, right. uh, these are all states Very to show that And that's why I raised actually, the question yes. so that someone hopefully will make the point. Thank you, Alex. Yeah. I paid him 50 euros to make this point, yeah. correct? I'm just kidding. All right, so they are saying we should soon stop because the other session finished. Do you have a question or a comment? So let's take whatever there is and then one quick comment from each and we'll bring it to an end. Yes, please. Uh, we need the microphone here, I think. There was a question there. Okay, let, let's go there, please. Yes. Um, afternoon. Um, my background is I'm a lawyer. I've worked with journalists. I, work, I used to work at Getty Images as an in-house lawyer. Um, I came to this today almost in two minds, um, one as, or two hats, one as a lawyer that works for technology and media, and the other that is a, is a mother of a two-year-old, so yes. I'm <laughs> wearing the hat of how do I inform yes. my daughter of, right. of, to have critical mind, and I think lots of really helpful things have been said. I think as a tutor, as a teacher, as a mother, a parent, you have a role to invite curiosity there isn't really a right and wrong. There's always a good and bad. There's always a view. And I think that even when we look at history today, there is a comment that's made that there's too much information. Oh, but actually, you could say, in fact, that information today is more verified than it's ever been because we all hold a truth. And even if we are being influenced, we all... If you look at media houses, if you look at The Guardian, well, most people know The Guardian is typically a left-wing paper. Therefore, when you read The Guardian, you can take that view because they're transparent about right. what their values are. Exactly. And, uh, but you, oft, you learn history and you look at the sources. But what we think is history and what we've learned as history is also questionable. And in fact, if you look back at some of the, the, the norms of the time, uh, what you know, what people were told by their leaders at the time, that's always questionable. And I think with my daughter, I think 
storytelling, which was mentioned, Windrush, which was mentioning, uh, we, are, we can in small and individual groups be storytellers and have a truth, which is always subject to being questioned. Um, and I think that's really, really important. And I used to teach just catechism in my church, but I, I, didn't, I took the, the book, Mella, we've been doing this for years, just read the book. And I'm like, okay, well, <laughs> I need to inspire. I need to yes. create questions back. So I think when we speak of journalism and publishers who can be anyone, I do think we should have a code of ethics, which is published. Um, but I think we should always invite everyone uh, to the table. And when it comes to technology tools, I think you just need to be curious, is, right. is my view. Thank you. Um, Thank you. Okay. Let's get these two, please, and then... Very quick comment and we'll end, okay? I mean, you can keep on talking on your own, that's fine. <laughs> yes, please. So, um, I understand that we are the upcoming generation and that we will be the ones to bring change into the world. But don't you think that the older generation, which we have established, hold the power currently, um, should receive some sort of education on the subject as well, um, since we are still receiving the same learning curves as they were years ago? Okay, thank you. Do you have a question as well? No? Um, the, the gentleman, yes? Um, as we said, like, our generation is going to be like the new future um, eventually. Um, but as we're currently seeing um, on social media and stuff, every time um, our, our generation takes a step against something, you always see the elder generation taking a step against our generation because we do not agree on decisions which they have taken. Of course, currently, some cer certain circumstances which we're currently facing are circumstances which the elder generation brought on us. And of course, we're fighting against that. Um, why, what, how do you think um, our generation can tackle um, all these sort of obstacles the elder generation are doing, and which are currently also stopping the, um, the younger generation to work on? Okay. Thank you. Thank you for your honesty. I mean, these are things we need to discuss. Maybe after we finish over a coffee, we can continue. But briefly, you want to start? Uh, Gary, yes? Well, I, I you mean... You have 30 seconds each. I'm like the CBC now. Okay. okay. Sorry. I, I think we, we should start the conference right now because that, those, these are the most those are salient the, questions. Thank the, you. The, the pitting uh, against of generations. And some people would debate that when you become... Elderly, yes. this generation does. You will take on the same norm right. of power that, okay. that we have. La last comment. No, they're saying they're cutting my head off. Oh, they're cutting your head off. Okay, let me pass it. <laughs> As I say, very easy. It's, it takes two to tango. Yeah. And if learning has to happen, it has to happen between the older and younger generation. And it's very important that there's an open discussion. Simple as that. Thank you. Open. Um, the, 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 this is why history is very important, because there was a time when we were in your place, and now we are getting old. And eventually, that is, the, that is the cycle. It's going to keep happening. You just have to be loud. Okay. Thank you. Um, Orsha? Um, yeah, currently we work with young people because you are the easiest to reach because you're in one place, you're in institutions like schools, universities. You can get a message to a lot of people very quickly that way. Um, and then it, for us, we disseminate it upwards, so we also work with families and that's how it gets through, but we're hoping that eventually the information filters through. But I wholeheartedly agree, old people are harder to reach, but they're the ones that we also need to be reaching with this. Thank you. Natalino. We've got Taliban in the room doing this, okay? <laughs> 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 They've been doing it's this it's lunch after this, so we can interrupt your lunch. No, yes. two, two little things I wanted to end with. Um, um, probably there'll be controversies and open more, more discussions. One is about ethics, and I think the simplest way that we can define ethics is your inner voice. Okay? Ask yourself, is this right or wrong? That, that, because we, we can speak about Confucius, who said uh, the person who says he can and the person who says who can't are both right. Mind-boggling, isn't it? So, inner voice. Uh, last point is about about power of the media. Um, I'll speak about about Malta and 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 end with. I think the media had power in Malta, but it's been eroded. So so um, um, faith in journalism here, faith in journalists has gone down the drain because politicians attacked journalists and undermined credibility right. uh, for their own good. And uh, it's up to you to restore okay. faith in journalism uh, in the future. Thank you. Thank you very much, all.